You don't need to know every single thing about JavaScript to be a successful JavaScript developer. In fact, here's five things that I've never used in JavaScript that you've probably even heard of. Hey, uh, James, I was looking at the code and you've got this call to object.assign. I've never heard of that. What is that? You don't know what object? That a sign is? How have you never used that? I'm, I don't know. It's just something I've never had a need to use. Wow, that's pretty embarrassing. I can't believe that you've never heard of that or used it. All right, so first off, let's stop with the idea of shaming people for things they've never heard of. If you never heard of a function or a topic in JavaScript, it's not a problem. It's maybe a learning opportunity, or maybe in this case, it's something that you don't even really need to know. So here are five things that I have heard of, but I have never used specifically in JavaScript. Now, we'll caveat to say that I have used some of these things in courses that I've gone through to learn about them, but I've never used them in code that I've actually written myself. So I want to make that clear. So the first thing is uh, object.assign. And uh, making copies of objects in JavaScript uh, is kind of a tricky thing, and this depends on your knowledge of uh, pass by value or pass by reference or reference versus value. So primitive values like strings and numbers are actually passed by value. So you can make a copy of that thing really easily. Objects though are pointers to a place in memory, which means it's not easy to make a copy of them. That's a big whole nother topic or at least a deep copy. Uh, because if you assign one variable to another, they're gonna point to the same space in memory. So uh, object.assign will copy all enumerable properties uh, from one or more source objects to a target object. So let's take a look. Uh, this is kind of the code that I just showed there. We can look at this inside of this Quokka extension in VS Code. I've got a video on Quokka if you want to check that out. But let's say that I have a target object and it has two properties, A1 uh, and then B2. And then the source um, has, let's start with something simpler here without the person part has a property B, C, and D of values four, five, and eight. So if you do object.assign uh, saying we want to apply all the properties of source to target. So it's going to go through each one of those properties. It's going to start with target. And it's going to say, hey, there's no A property in the source. So keep that in target. But then B property is actually in both. So the source is going to override the original property of target. Then it's going to add on the additional values of C and eight. Now here's where it gets really tricky though, is if I do add a person object inside of here. So if there's a person object, you would think that this is going to make a copy of that data inside of the returned target object. It's not exactly what it does. It actually makes it actually makes a, another pointer to the same object in memory, which means if I take source.target, uh, or excuse me, source dot person, if I could type this out, person dot, my typing is terrible, is Bob. And then I log out uh, source dot person dot name. Uh, it will say Bob, as you would probably expect. But then if I also take returned target dot person dot name and console log that as well, you will see that this will be updated as Bob as well. So it doesn't actually make deep copies of the data that's inside of there, which is one of the really tricky things in JavaScript. So object.assign is used to copy all enumerable properties from a source to the target. But remember, if it's an object property, it's not making a deep clone of this object. It's gonna have the same reference in memory. Anyway, object.assign is something I've, uh, I've never used before. So there's number one. All right, number two are these fancy properties that um, I don't, they're in all trivia for JavaScript, but I've never used them myself. So it's bind, call, and apply. And so the example in here that they give you is if you have some sort of object and it has a property of num2, and then you want to call a function that's looking for this dot num. Well, inside of this function, inside of the scope, there is no property of uh, num. So inside of the scope, there is no property of num. So it doesn't know what to return here. It's going to look at this dot num and probably be undefined, I believe. Undefined plus a, whatever that returns. I have no idea because JavaScript is weird. But if you uh, then uh, want to kind of switch the context or the this context inside of this function to be this object, in that case, you would have a value or a property here called num that you could uh, call. So 
you can uh, take the add function and you can call dot call on it and pass in the original object that you're looking for and then the parameter that you want to pass into the function. It will do some fancy stuff behind the scenes to switch the context or the this inside of this function to return to refer to that object. Um, now, additional thing that you can do, and this becomes important with um, call and apply, is you can pass multiple parameters. So if you have a function that takes two parameters, you can pass those in as extra parameters here. The difference between call and apply is that those extra parameters with apply come in the form of an array. So depending on maybe you already have an array of data, you could call apply here. Or if you have an array of data, you could spread it out uh, with the spread operator and pass that in and use call. Same kind of thing. Now, the only difference between those two and bind is bind is going to be used to uh, not execute a function immediately, but returns a function that can be uh, executed later on. Anyway, these are things like in my JavaScript crash courses that I've participated in in the uh, advanced web developer bootcamp by Cold Steel, which you should check out. Uh, we talk all about this and it's kind of interesting, but it's something I have never used. Next up is hoisting. Now this may be kind of hard to believe. Hoisting, I think, is one of those really common names, uh, topics in JavaScript that um, seems like something I would need to know about and I really don't and never use it, at least intentionally. So hoisting is this idea with var declared variable specifically, this is important, that if I declare a variable at the bottom, and then reference it before uh, it's actually been declared, that's actually valid JavaScript because hoisting is gonna take the declaration of that variable and put it at the top. So it's automatically gonna move that up, which I don't, I don't really know why that would be a good thing. Why would I not just write my code in a better way and define that thing above? Anyway, so in this example, um, I can get rid of the stuff up here. You can see that uh, I define x to be three here, um, then I assign it to five, and if I log out x, even though this is above the declaration, that's gonna work. That's only with uh, var variables with let, uh, this doesn't work. So with let, you cannot access x before initialization, and then const, you'll get some sort of error, maybe the same thing. Uh, you would have the additional problem of not being able to uh, reassign that thing to a new value. So mainly the reason, well, two reasons, I've never used this, is one, I would never, I have no reason to try to use a variable before I've actually declared it. So that just kind of goes away in itself. And then because I use constant let variables and never use var, uh, which I think is probably where most of us are at or most of us are getting, wanting to be, uh, then I have no reason to uh, to use hoisting. It, it provides nothing for me. So now the next thing, again, a popular topic, if you're going through learn the, deep parts of JavaScript is the prototype. And the prototype is basically how, kind of the idea of object-oriented uh, programming and inheriting properties and sharing properties and things work in JavaScript. Now, the thing that has really changed is now we have, as of ES6, ES 2015, we have classes in JavaScript. It's interesting to note, classes are just syntactical sugar on top of the prototype. So it actually uses the JavaScript prototype behind the scenes, but this means I no longer and have never directly interacted with the prototype outside of tutorials, learning about how to use the prototype. So uh, with ES6, instead of defining uh, this function as your constructor for something and then accessing the prototype, sorry, I've got Spanish words that are uh, filtering in here from this uh, toucan, I think is the extension, anyway. Uh, so this is accessing the prototype and updating the nationality or adding a property nationality of English. So instead of having that function uh, that we create that is then used as a constructor with the class syntax, do I have the class syntax up? I do not, let's actually see. JavaScript class syntax. So I was looking at uh, classes versus, versus prototype earlier. Your class syntax, you define your constructor inside, you've got your properties and you can uh, do extends, it's not in here, but you have uh, kind of everything, almost everything probably that you would want from object-oriented programming in terms of inheriting properties from a child, inheriting property in a child class from a parent class. So no longer am I directly uh, working with the prototype. I don't have to reference the prototype specifically at all, although it is being used behind the scenes. So I just work with ESX modern class syntax. Now the last one on here are generators. Generators, I feel like we're something that uh, I think landed in ES6, uh, ES 2015 as well. I think, don't quote me on that, but um, it seemed like it was gonna be more useful than it actually ended up being. And I couldn't even tell you what a generator uh, is used for. 
I just have no idea. I've watched a couple tutorials at one point because I felt like I should know and then I didn't get it and I just left it and I've never cared and I've never had to worry about it. So I have absolutely no idea what generators are for or how they're used and I've never felt the need to use one. So if you know what generators are, you have a good example of how you use them, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, those are five different topics in JavaScript that I never use, not that I haven't ever, but really have only ever used them in tutorial sense, like in practicing and learning but I've never used them in code that I was writing for something that I was building. I'm curious, are you using any of these features? Um, and if you have good examples of when you're using them, let me know in the comments below. Thanks as always for checking out the video and I'll catch you next time.